So we've reached a stage where we can see a succession of phenotypes. Okay, so the next stage in research was to start to look at some of the actual mutations that were occurring in these stages. So through studying um, biopsies from people who are having colonoscopies, they could collect sizable groups of patients with small um, adenomas and again sizable populations of people with mid-stage and large adenomas and effectively they're able to group these tissue samples um, you know it, and look at the mutations that were occurring in the cells of these similar kinds of similar stage um, um, cancers from the, 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 the colon and they were then able to look for and identify some of these key genes that were involved in the progression of the, the, the cancer. So some of the observations they made were that um, in these early stage adenomas they were picking up some kind of mutation on the long arm of chromosome 5. Okay, so a lot of this work was done before um, the advanced genome sequencing projects were available, the ones that we have today, so these were done um, in earlier stages, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s. So um, they were looking at regions of chromosomes rather than individual genes. Um, they also um, noticed that in some of the, the larger adenomas there was a high propensity to have mutations in a gene called RAS um, or the KRAS gene. So they started to pick up some of these key um, genes, proteins that are involved in cell cycle pro progression and notice mutations in those. And um, th they went on to look at um, other regions of the genome and noticed that you know, on chromosome 17 or 18 there were some um, other mutations um, commonly found. So effectively they looked at um, normal eth epithelium, hyperplastic epithelium, um, later stage adenomas, we know from early, intermediate and late stage. They looked at um, more full-blown carcinomas and then they looked at some of the tissue samples from patients where the cells had broken away and metastasized, metastasized and gone to another region of the body. And what they started to observe were in the progression of these normal cells to this these sort of hyperplastic epithelia that still look quite normal but are showing thickening and you know slightly you know um, different characteristics there was a loss of a gene called APC and they kind of knew that from also from these familiar studies where they had already identified that there was a key mutation that gave rise to polyps so they started to identify in these um, patient samples um, the loss of a gene called APC and then as the um, the, the succession of phenotypes occurs, they started to pick up changes in DNA methylation status, which affects gene expression. They started to pick up mutations in certain um, genes, which led to their activation, such as RAS. And then they picked up mutations in other genes, which led to their inactivation. So they started to, some genes were becoming activated, and some genes were becoming um, lost. And then they were then starting to relate the loss of the gene to the progression of the disease. One of the things they noticed in um, tumor progression was that typically there was a, genes, uh, a gene called an oncogene. So a bunch of genes that all can be categorized as oncogenes. Now within um, tumor progression, there's at least one of these oncogenes or a proto-oncogene um, is mutated and we'll look at oncogenes and tumor suppressors in later lectures. So for now we'll just <clears throat> flag the issue that in tumor progression there's at least one oncogene is mutated and there tend to be more of these genes called tumor suppressor genes that tend to be inactivated as well. So the, the ratio of um, tumor suppressor genes um, to oncogenes tends to be fairly consistent in, in cancers, so you have more tumor suppressors inactivated than you do um, having oncogenes activated. Um, and that's, that's typical for many types of cancers.
But I guess the, the important thing here, well, I mean, we'll look at these later, but the important thing here, they're starting to identify particular gene types that are involved in tumor pro progression. So we've been talking about an orderly succession of tissue phenotypes, and now we're starting to take that idea to a more um, detailed level and starting to try and identify an ordered succession of genetic changes. Okay, so we know we've got multiple hits, we've got, we've got a multi-hit hypothesis, but that hypothesis has, doesn't describe any of the actual mutations that occur. And now, once we've identified a succession of phenotypes, you can then do these studies to try and identify a succession of genetic changes um, that relate to the progression of the disease. Um, for colon cancer, um, most common is this alteration in chromosome 5, and that turns out to be the APC gene. Here's a little diagram that shows the um, colon. Um, so this is looking at um, colon cancer in, in a cartoon here. The first observation we have of um, the progression towards the, um, a malignant cancer is a fairly small benign polyp. And that may be of no issue whatsoever to that patient over a period of time. It may not go through a, a succession of um, phenotypes because it may not pick up those mutations. Okay? But um, there are instances where mutations in other genes do occur and then these lead to a more obvious benign growth. And then within that population of cells, you have additional um, mutations occurring, um, potentially giving rise to a later stage adenoma. And then you get um, this benign growth becoming a, a larger um, growth. And then at some point, if it's able to break its way through this basal lamella, this, this, this wall here, um, that contains this growth, then it may be able to move to another part of the body and through a process called metastasis. And this is just adding a little bit of detail now to the progression of the, um, the phenotypes here. So now we can start to say that within a single patient now, that we, we're, we're, we're thinking that, well, the early stage mutations may be a loss in this APC gene for colon cancer, giving rise to this small growth, and then additional um, succession of mutations are occurring, such as um, a KRAS mutation, some um, loss of tumor suppressors in various other parts of the genome, leading to an increasingly malignant phenotype, giving rise to um, a, an aggressive tumor at this stage. So to have a little cartoon now to have a look at some of these observed mutations. So we know that early stage um, in colon cancer progression tends to be the, um, a mutation in a tumor suppressor called APC. Now that can be followed, for instance, by a mutation in one of these oncogenes that we'll discuss later called RAS. And then that may be followed by another genetic lesion that we don't understand, and then that might be followed by another mutation in a gene that we do understand, such as P53, which is another tumor suppressor, and this gives rise to a more aggressive growth phenotype, and then through this succession of um, th these multi-steps, you then have um, a, a, a more malignant cell phenotype. Alternatively, the APC gene may be followed by a mutation in another gene. So in some patients, it might be the RAF gene rather than the RAS gene. So it's another protein in another signaling pathway that's mutated. And in other patients, this uh, mutation in the RAF gene might be followed by a mutation in another gene and then a mutation in some other genes that haven't been characterized. So you can see that there's a, for each, um, each patient, there may be a different um, succession of mutations leading to a malignant phenotype. And in other patients, it might be a mutation in the PI3K pathway, the phosphoinositol 3 kinase pathway. And that might be followed by another mutation in a gene we don't understand, and then P53 might be 
an unlikely you know third or fourth or fifth or sixth mutation so it's 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 what is observed in the tissue samples is there's a bunch of key players and in some patients these ones are mutated and in other patients these ones are mutated okay and you know there's other sorts of pathways that can occur such as a maybe a a, a tyrosine kinase receptor on the cell might be mut mutated which drives growth in certain ways so effectively what we're looking at is a range of different pathways that can occur so for some patients it might be you know um, one succession of mutations and for another patient it might be a different succession of mutations so within a cancer type there's a range of players a range of genes which are important but for each individual, there might be an, a, a distinct pathway of mutations. So when you get to this late stage um, um, cancer here, effectively it starts to break through this, um, this encapsulating membrane. And then if it can break through there, buried in this um, tissue here are blood vessels. And once the um, cells can break free to get into the blood vessels they can then be transported to other regions of the body okay and we'll look at this process in a couple of slides time this process of um, metastasis so um, this is going to metastasize and spread to other regions of the body by breaking through the membrane getting into a ves blood vessel and then being transported to another region of the body where it can um, uh, where it can escape. So this is just showing these cells breaking into the bloodstream.